In this video, we will see about the correspondence between filtering in spatial and frequency domains. These are some brief contents which will be discussed throughout this video. Now let us define what is filtering. Filtering in digital image processing or signal processing perspective can be defined as extraction of desired frequencies of signal for further processing. Now let us consider filtering in one dimensional signals. One dimensional signals are signals which have only one independent variable which is continuously varying that is time or space. Consider a signal x of t which must undergo filtration and a filter whose impulse response is h of t. Now if we convolute x of t with h of t we get an output y of t signal which is a filter version of x of t. Mathematically this can be represented as y of t is equals to x of t convolution process with h of t. Whereas in frequency domains the same is represented as y of u is equals to x of u dot product with h of u. This is because convolution in time domain can be represented as multiplication of individual elements at a particular frequency in frequency domain. Now let us consider the block diagram representation of filtering process of one dimensional signal. At the input we applied a combined sinusoidal signal of low frequency and an high frequency to a low pass filter whose impulse response is h of t. And at the output only one sinusoidal signal which has lower frequency has appeared. Hence the signal has undergone filtering process. The same is represented in the frequency domain representation in the following figure. Sinusoidal signal is nothing but an impulse which is symmetric about y axis in frequency domain. Now let us consider two dimensional filtering in digital image processing. It almost follows similar analogy as one dimension filtration process. In two dimensional filtering we also have spatial domain and frequency domain. In spatial domain filtering we directly manipulate the values of pixels of images based on the filter developed. Whereas in frequency domain filtering, we first calculate the discrete Fourier transform of the image and then manipulate the values of DFT of image with the required filter. Correspondence between filtering in spatial and frequency domain. The basic relation is given by the convolution theorem. In time domain, it is the convolution of image with the filter, whereas in frequency domain, it is the multiplication of discrete Fourier transform of image with the DFT of the filter. The following equation gives the Fourier transform pair of the filtering process. For a given filter in frequency domain h of u comma v, we can find its equivalent representation in the spatial domain by calculating the inverse Fourier transform of h of u comma v. It follows similar analogy even for the spatial domain filter. Therefore, these filters form a Fourier transform pair which is given by the below equation. Implementation of filtering in frequency domain. In following slides, we will look at the steps required and its MATLAB simulation to implement filtering in frequency domain. The following are the steps. In step 1, we obtain the padding parameters P and Q which are generally considered as 2M and 2N respectively where M and N are the size of original image. Now form the padded image by applying zeros to the original image f of x comma y. Now multiply the padded image with minus 1 power x plus y to center the transform. In step 4 apply the forward DFT to obtain f of u comma v which is frequency domain representation of the image. In step 5 generate a filter of size p cross q with its center at p by 2 comma q by 2 then multiply the image and the filter to form the filtered output and store it in g of u comma v. Now apply inverse Fourier transform to obtain the image in spatial domain then multiply it with minus 1 power x plus y to compensate the previous multiplication in step 3. 
Now we must extract the top left quadrant of fp of x comma y which is our desired output. MATLAB implementation. In step 1 we read the image as a matrix into MATLAB workspace and then convert into, into a double array. Then we obtain the padding parameters which is 2m and 2n which are given to p and q. Then the double for loop here pads the zeros to the image to form the padded image. In step 3, now we multiply the padded image with minus 1 power x plus y to center its transform and obtain pre-processed image. Then apply the forward Fourier transform to obtain its frequency domain representation in step 4. Here we can visualize the spectrum of the figure in frequency domain. From the figure of spectrum, it doesn't contain much information about the frequency domain representation of the image. So to visualize the exact information, we apply a lag transform to spectrum of the figure. Here we consider the log transform because frequencies in an image might range from very small values to very high values around hundreds of kilohertz. To visualize this huge range over a small area, we require logarithmic graph. In step 5, we design a filter which is cylindrical with radius 0.1. The following equation defines the boundary of the filter, whereas the nested for loop defines the filter. The image shown over here is the three dimensional representation of the low pass filter mask which is designed now. In step 6, we multiply the designed filter with the DFT of the image to obtain filtered output. Then we apply inverse Fourier transform to the filtered output to obtain the original image after filtering process. The output image after 2D inverse DFT is given over here. And now we must extract the top left quadrant of the image which is our desired output and trim the excess padding which was done to process the image. The generated output after filtering process is the blurred version of the original image. One dimension Gaussian filter. Gaussian filter is a low pass filter used for reducing noise that is high frequency components and blurring regions of images. We specifically consider Gaussian filters because these are some special type of filters which yield the real functions in both forward and inverse Fourier transform. In frequency domain, the representation of Gaussian filter is given as h of u is equals to a e power minus u square by 2 sigma square where u is particular frequency and a is amplitude and sigma is the standard deviation of the Gaussian curve. The corresponding filter in spatial domain is given as h of x equals to root over 2 pi sigma a e power minus 2 pi square sigma square and x square where x represents the spatial coordinate. As the sigma grows in frequency domain, the width of the bell curve grows in frequency domain, whereas the converse appears in the time domain. From the following graph, it is evident that as the sigma grows, the bell curve width grows in frequency domain. And conversely, in time domain, bell curve shrinks as the sigma grows. The Gaussian curves behave reciprocally. As sigma increases in frequency domain, the time domain function will have a narrow profile. As sigma tends to infinity, h of u tends towards a constant function which is dc and h of x becomes an impulse which states that no filtering occurs and the input is same as the output. Gaussian high pass filters. These can be obtained by taking difference of two Gaussian filters by satisfying the following conditions where a is greater than or equals to b and sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2. The following represents the equation of a Gaussian high pass filter. H of u is equals to 
ए पवर माइनस म्यू स्क्वे बै टू सिग्मा वन स्क्वे माइनस बी पवर माइनस म्यू स्क्वे बै सिग्मा टू सिग्मा टू स्क्वे द करेस्पांग फिलटर इन फ्रेसियल डोमेन इज गि ऐस फॉलो गॉशन हईपास फिलटर्स फॉलो द सेम एनालजी एस द लो पास फिलटर्स As the sigma grows, the width of the bell curve in frequency domain increases, whereas in time domain it narrows. Coming back to the main topic of the video, in this MATLAB simulation, we compare the outputs of two images which are generated by frequency and spatial domain filtering. Initially, we declare a three by three Sobel vertical edge detector. it is a special type of filter which detects the sharp edges of the image or the high frequency components then we generate its frequency domain response and apply it over the image which is to be filtered then we compare the results of the spatial domain filtering and frequency domain filtering the following are the steps to obtain the frequency response of sobel vertical edge detector apply padding to the filter which is declared in the spatial domain such that part symmetry is maintained which results in hp of x comma y multiply the padded filter with minus 1 whole power x plus y to center its frequency domain filter now in step 3 compute the forward dft now set the real part of the computed dft to 0 as the filter is odd symmetric it must contain only imaginary parts therefore the real parts must be set to 0 now multiply the result by minus 1 whole power x plus y which reverses the multiplication of h of u comma b by minus 1 whole power x plus y this is implicit when h of x comma y was moved to the center of h p of x comma y matlab implementation in step 1 we read the image into matlab workspace as a 2d array then we convert it into a double array to perform the operations while transforming into dft here we visualize the spectrum of the image by applying lag transform as previously mentioned as image contains wide range of frequencies we apply lag transform to visualize them initially we declare the desired filter in the spatial domain then apply the padding and perform the steps mentioned in the previous slide to obtain its frequency domain response the following is the perspective plot of the filter in frequency domain the following is the image of the filter in frequency domain in next step we apply the filtering operation over the image read in step 1 in both spatial and frequency domain to obtain the output from the images obtained as output it is evident that filtering operation in frequency domain and spatial domain yield the same results from this simulation the relation between spatial domain filtering and frequency domain filtering is verified it is given by the convolution theorem Thank you.